move through this season of Advent. We celebrate that Jesus has come and that he promises to come again. Jesus came to bring light and hope, but our hearts are often shrouded by darkness and despair. Jesus came to bring joy and peace, but our hearts are often encased by sorrow and turmoil. Jesus came to bring life and love, but our hearts are often hardened by resistance and contempt. As Jesus entered the world to conquer sin and death, we open our hearts in confession to be cleansed from our sinfulness and to be restored to the image of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you so loved the world that you gave your Son that we may not perish but have eternal life. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. My friends, this is the good news of the gospel. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives all of our sins strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. This is the good news of the gospel. Therefore let us sing to the glory of God. Go! To those who are sick, open a window of insight so they can glimpse the healing you plan for your whole creation and so await their own healing with patient endurance. For those who are out of work and near out of their minds with that anxiety, go before them to open a path through their troubles that they may follow you to a bright future. For those far and separated from loved ones, let their hearts experience the spiritual joy of concentrating their thought and worship upon you, who loved the world so much that you gave your only Son. You sent him not with ribbons and wrappings, but with power and grace. Whether we've been naughty or nice, you have given your Son to us. Receive our thanks and our praise. And hear now our private concerns quietly within our own hearts.
And now together we join our voices as one as we continue to address you as our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. This is the word of the Lord. In a few days, we're going to be opening Christmas gifts. 
And I suppose every family has a different uh, mode of uh, opening gifts, different traditions, maybe taking turns or uh, just ripping into it as one mass of people going after the gifts. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I've noticed over the years that sometimes we open a gift and we'll look at it and we'll say something like, oh, it's a necktie, just what I wanted, thanks. Uh, now for someone like me, I, I don't need neckties, but I still say, oh, it's a necktie, thanks, I appreciate it. And I do appreciate it. But my son and I have determined that whenever we open gifts, at least in my house, and uh, we respond, the, we either respond by saying, wow, or we look at the gift and we say what the gift is as if nobody knows what it is. And when we look at a gift and say, ah, underwear, ah, socks, that when we say what the gift is, there's probably an element of disappointment uh, with what we've received. Uh, now, if you think this is new, think again. You go back 2,000 years and you'll find that Jesus came as a gift to humanity, and for some people, there was a level of disappointment. Now, the first Christmas, of course, Jesus Christ given to the world, the first Christmas present, how could you be disappointed at that? And, um, but take a look at the reaction of John the Baptist. John the Baptist looks at Jesus Christ and there's a little bit of concern about this gift. Maybe a little bit of disappointment. John the Baptist was vested in uh, Jesus Christ and wanted him to be a successful Messiah. And John the Baptist was sent by God to prepare the way for Christ. And John the Baptist was in the desert and at the Jordan River preaching and baptizing and telling people to get ready for Christ. And John the Baptist was the one who baptized Christ in the River Jordan. And John the Baptist watched Jesus begin his preaching career. He listened to others report on what Jesus was doing and what Jesus was saying. And now G um, John is in prison. And John has put his career, his reputation on the very line. He's put his life on the line for Jesus. And Jesus is not the gift that he expected. And maybe John was a little bit disappointed in how Jesus was turning out to be the Messiah. But John the Baptist, the Messiah, was going to judge the good and the evil and throw the evil into the unquenchable fire. And instead, Jesus comes along and says, blessed are the merciful. John the Baptist liked to point fingers at people and say things like, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to escape from the coming wrath? And in contrast, Jesus warned people, Do not judge or you will be judged. You see, when John the Baptist was called by God to prepare the way for Jesus to be the Messiah, he probably got real excited thinking that God was finally going to fix the world, and fixing the world meant bringing judgment upon all those people. And the popularity of Jesus grew, and John the Baptist began to get nervous and maybe a little disappointed in the gift of Jesus Christ. And eventually, John sent some of his followers to Jesus to ask him the question, Are you the one who is to come, or are we supposed to be waiting for another in other words, John doesn't look at Jesus and say, Wow, this is great. What a wonderful gift from God. Instead, John the Baptist looks at Jesus and says, Oh, a peacemaker. Oh, it's someone who wants us to show mercy instead of casting people into the lakes of fire. Oh, it's not someone who will fix my enemies by destroying them. It's someone who tells me to love my enemies and to pray for them. 
For John the Baptist, it is as if Christmas Day has come and he opens the box and he says, oh, a necktie. Just what John the Baptist needs. <laughs> well, it may well be that John had just a moment of hope, a moment of temptation, uh, when he sent the question to Jesus, are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? Maybe John was hoping that Jesus would say, yes, expect someone else. I'm like you, John. I'm preparing the way. But instead, Jesus gives proof of his Messiahship by saying the blind receive sight. Well, John the Baptist never expected the Messiah to do that. Jesus says the lame walk, and John never expected the Messiah to do that. And Jesus says, those who have had leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The good news is preached to the poor, and John the Baptist never expected the Messiah to do those things. What about throwing the people into the fire? <laughs> Not a word. The greatest gift of Christmas is Jesus Christ, and there is a danger that some of us might be disappointed in that gift. Disappointed in Jesus Christ? Us? You know, when you look at the news and you see the report of this young 15-year-old gunman who goes into a school and begins to kill other students, children, threatens the life of so many people. Are you disappointed that Jesus would allow that to happen? Where's the lake of fire when you need one? In places like Afghanistan and other places, the fighting goes on and there's no end in sight. Are you disappointed that Christ would allow wars to happen? The doctor tells you you have cancer. Are you somewhat disappointed that God would let that happen to you? Someone you love dies, you lose your job, your kids fail in school, your parents are mean, your spouse cheats on you. Are you disappointed in Christ? If you've ever been disappointed in Christ, I can tell you right now what the problem is. How many of you here, when you got a new toy for Christmas, even as an adult, maybe a new cell phone or uh, an iPad or a new car, uh, how many of you, before you turn on the new device or whatever, and you try to operate it, read the instructions first? You know, my philosophy is you read the instructions after you, you can't figure out how to make something work. If you've ever been disappointed in Christ, it's probably because we didn't read the scriptures carefully first, the Bible. If you've ever been disappointed in God, uh, it's probably because God or Jesus did not do what you wanted done. And the Bible never says that Christ has come to serve you. But rather, the Bible says we are here to serve Christ. And time and again, we see the phrase in Scripture, serve the Lord. In Psalm 100, we read, serve the, the Lord with gladness. In 1 Samuel, we read, do not turn away from God, but serve the Lord. In Colossians, we read, is, it is the Lord you are serving. You see, in our contemporary self-centered, self-seeking culture, we expect to be served. We expect God Almighty to wait on us hand and foot, and we fall into thinking that the purpose of God is to serve us and to make us happy, and we forget that it's the other way around. The Almighty wants us to serve. We are here to serve Christ. We're not here to be served, but to serve. And we expect Jesus to listen to our prayers and do exactly as we say. And when he doesn't, we be become disappointed. But what he does for us is what is best for us. Not necessarily what we want, but it's what's best. 
We want Jesus to wipe out the evil people around us, but Jesus does one better. He calls us to love those people and to be at peace with them. And you know, if Jesus uh, was to wipe out all of the evil people and throw them into that lake of fire that John the Baptist kept talking about, we would be included in that lake of fire because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We want Jesus to change the world for our liking, but Jesus expects us to be the element of change. If we have ever been disappointed in God or Jesus, it is not because God has failed us. It's because we have failed to understand. And if we remain faithful, we will find that Christ is so much better than we ever expected. We simply need to trust in Jesus Christ. Even when bad things are happening, Jesus is the best gift that Christmas brings. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be ascribed all might, power, dominion, and glory today and forever. Amen. song to you it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift with every breath i'm singing hallelujah Child, they search the air to find a place for you are coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born. i
sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Celebrate breath you drew us. Hallelujah. 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 And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.